Hi everyone, it has been a while. You guys know me, I do not like or enjoy opening up on camera. I'm not that YouTuber that like every single time something goes wrong, I'm like on here creating a clickbait video, like talking about how I feel to everyone or like what's going on. But at the same time, it just didn't really feel right to come back with a video and not address like why I've basically not been posting over the summer. I was actually considering not saying anything because one part of me thinks like it's nobody else's business. How I feel or what I'm doing in my life is literally no one's business but mine. Also, I have a cold, which is why I sound like this. But I've just had so many messages over the summer and comments, like really, really sweet ones that really touched me. Just people checking in, asking if I I'm okay saying that they miss me which by the way I was not expecting I just thought I could like disappear for the summer and no one would care so that was really really nice um so without turning this video into like a therapy session this is not what I do it's not what I'm comfortable doing I really want this to be a fun positive vlog but I also couldn't do that just without slightly addressing where I've been this summer um so as you guys know I've had my YouTube channel for eight years now I was 20 when I started this and I'm about to turn 29 and I have loved it there was a time where I was just obsessed with YouTube I was full of ideas I just couldn't stop thinking about it I was so inspired I was so motivated and I enjoyed filming and editing and I loved reading the comments and everything about it was just so exciting and I adored it and gradually between that time that magical time and now um things have just really really changed and I just don't feel that way anymore which is such a hard and sad thing to admit and I think for a long time I was like really in denial about that and I was just plowing through and as you guys know like I've given my all to my YouTube channel over the years like it has literally been my life and I think that that was the problem. My entire sense of self and worth is in this YouTube channel, which is very toxic and unhealthy. And obviously there are so many layers to this and depth that it will just take too long to stand here and talk about now. But my innate perfectionism, which I do have, I've always had my entire life, combined with like the high pressure of being like a big social media influencer, trying to, um, like keep everything that I've built and grown kind of drove me to put it bluntly to breaking point and I absolutely had to step away for my well-being and I think part of the reason why I hate talking about this online is because when people like me do are very often met with boo hoo hoo cry me a river like get a real job live in the real world and I totally understand why people um think that because it's partially true this is not the traditional real world or a traditional real job and sometimes honestly guys I, I really really crave that because my life isn't really normal and it can be wonderful sometimes I love it and I know that if it was gone I would really really miss it but please understand that everything comes at a price and this job this what I do this world is not for everyone and it's certainly not for the faint-hearted and I'm not the faint-hearted I know I can be very soft in some ways but I'm also very very strong and the fact that this industry came really really close to breaking me is something that I never ever thought would happen. I remember throughout the years watching videos of YouTubers who said they were quitting, they couldn't do it anymore or they'd had a break and they'd come back and they were explaining you know how it just really got to them and I thought that could never be me like I never imagined that would be me. Um, but I guess it is. And I'm just trying to be as honest with you as possible because all of you have supported me, you know, for such a huge part of my life and I wouldn't be where I am today without all of you. And I know that and I do feel like I, that's why I owe you some honesty. Um, and the truth is I do not want to leave this behind. I don't want to quit. If I won, you know, the lottery and I had a billion pounds, I wouldn't just think, oh, well, I don't need to work now. I'll never show my face on social media again. Um, that's not how I feel. So I think for me, it's about finding a way to be able to do this and still feel okay and not to feel miserable constantly, to feel anxious from the moment I open my eyes in the morning to the minute I close them at night. And I honestly think a big part of that for me will be like diversifying what it is I actually do because for the past eight years, I've just been like tunnel visioned. Everything has been about YouTube. And I think that's why it's such a, a source of anxiety because it's, it's everything. It's been everything to me. And I think I need it to just not be 
everything and I think also trying to maybe get back to a place like more how it was at the beginning when I started where I would film videos if I had a good idea or I felt very inspired or I just felt like it rather than this relentless crippling pressure of having to put something out every week that's everyone's going to love and it's got to be perfect and maybe just coming back here and there when I actually really want to um so for example if I go on a trip like I love my travel vlogs like when me and Josie travel together I didn't vlog Saint Tropez and part of me like is really heartbroken that I didn't because I would have loved to have made a beautiful YouTube video of my Saint Tropez trip but honestly me and JJ have been together for eight years and we have never like I honestly mean never, maybe once at the very beginning, gone on a trip where I haven't been vlogging and working, which is crazy. Like never in our relationship have we just gone away together and had a nice time and not had to think about content. So I don't regret it too much. Um, but yeah, travel vlogs, when I do my bathroom transformation eventually this year, I'll definitely make a video about it and share it. Um, also, just being completely candid, but when I do have sponsored work or collaborations come through, like this is my living, which I also have to consider. And just one final word on this before I move on, but I completely understand how privileged and lucky I am to basically be able to say, I'm just gonna work when I feel like it. Like, I know how that sounds and I know how lucky I am and believe me, I'm so grateful. But at the same time, I've done that for myself. I've worked so hard to be able to put myself in this position when I really, really need it. I mean, I think for anyone that would be the dream to be in that situation, but I know for most people it will not be a reality. And I do really, really know and understand how lucky I am to be able to have put myself in this position. And I know that even after all of this, there are still going to be people who have got something to say that aren't gonna like what they've heard but I just can't do anything else other than be honest. I try my best to be a good person, a nice person, to understand how lucky I am, but it's still my reality, it's valid. And just please remember that there's so much that goes on in a person's life other than what you see on camera. And no matter how wonderful and perfect everything looks on the surface, everything truly, truly does come at a price, which I have been paying with my sanity. Anyway, I don't want to go on for too much longer because I I want this to be a nice positive vlog I've got lovely things happening this week that I want to share with you um but I just really hope that you can understand where I've come from um and will just continue to support me in you know whatever way you want to <sighs> I'm done I really hate doing that I feel quite proud of myself and also a little bit better and lighter for getting that off my chest and sharing it with you because I don't want to like be keeping secrets and not that it was really a secret but anyway you know what I mean Moving on. The lighting today is immaculate. It's a beautiful sunny day. I was actually really gutted um, that last week when we were in Saint Tropez was like the hottest week of summer in the UK. I was like, that's so typical. And when we got back, it was raining. It was horrible, but the sun's come back out and I think it's gonna be a nice week, which is great because it's my birthday this weekend. I actually don't have any plans yet because it's just been a crazy time. There was the trip that we planned and then went away. Um, and then this week is the flossy shoot. The autumn winter collection which I know I say this every time but like I think you guys are really going to love this one the best I'll give you a little hint although you will see the dresses later on in this video it's kind of like the overture collection but an autumn winter version and that's all I'm gonna say um, and then also next week I'm going to Toronto me and my mum are going for Declan and Vanessa's wedding some of you all know Declan and Vanessa Declan is my cousin Vanessa is his fiance aka my best friend now um, we went to Bermuda together uh, in May so you can watch that vlog if you haven't seen it so as always before a trip I need to just plan out some outfits see if anything needs to be washed and as always I have a few new in pieces from Abercrombie to try on and show you at the start of every season I do a little roundup edit and we've got some really cute stuff some classic Freddy bits and then also a couple of new ish vibes so let's try them on and decide what's coming to Toronto. Okay, so here's my box of stuff. It's mainly the usual, like cute knitwear. We have a sweater that you guys are gonna go crazy for because it's the new like 2023 version of the soft sweaters that I wear like all the time and everyone always wants them. But there's one thing I have to try on first and you guys are going to die. Okay, so there is a story. It was one day this summer and we were going out for dinner as a family and I was just like really busy and I was really stressed and I was just getting worked up. I was like, I don't know what to wear. And Coco was like, I'll pick you an outfit. And she goes into my drawer and she takes out this pair of jeans and I'm like, 
Ew, why would you choose jeans? I don't wear jeans. But she put it together and it was like jeans, my cute little like white knitted puff sleeve top, slingbacks, shoulder bag, and I was like, okay, that is kind of cute. I'll try that on. Anyway, I put the jeans on and we were both like, they were dangerously close to skinny jeans. Now, please do not judge me, guys. I don't wear jeans. I don't even know I had these in my drawer. And if you still like skinny jeans, ignore me, wear what you like, but honestly, for me, in that moment, I was like, I have never felt more millennial in my life. They just felt so dated. So when I saw these on Abercrombie, I was like, do you know what? I think I just need to give them a go. It might all go wrong. So these are a pair of baby pink straight leg jeans, which I think like could look really cute and like sophisticated. I think in general a wider leg is just more elegant and more sophisticated than a skinny leg but I just don't know how I'm gonna feel about them. I didn't even know what size to get. I got the curvy size actually because um, this dress that I'm wearing now is ASOS Hourglass and I've never had a dress that fits me better apart from like my flossy dresses literally because they're made to my body. So I thought I'd go for the curve jeans so that they're like tighter around the waist but have a bit more room around the legs i'm either gonna look really cool or really stupid i'm scared let's try them on oh my gosh guys i just styled up the jeans and i actually love them i cannot believe it like if you'd have said to me a few years ago would you ever wear like straight leg jeans i would have died but these actually look so nice and they're so much more flattering than skinny jeans like why did we ever do that to ourselves i cannot believe how much i actually like these can you guys see in like the reflection the full length it was such a good shout for me to get the curved jeans i know people do not think i've got a curvy figure but like i would have had to get the same size but if i didn't get the curved ones this waist would not have fit me it's like nice and snugly like can you see just how seamless those jeans are fitting on my body and they're so comfortable. So I just styled it with this cute little white knitted top that I already had, um, a little shoulder bag, a headband just to remind everyone that I am still girly even though I'm wearing jeans, <laughs> even though they're pink. And then I actually just popped on these little like heeled ballet pumps, which I'm not sure are definitely the way to go. I'm just really not used to styling jeans. So I'm like, not sure if that's the right look, but I think they look pretty cute. They just keep it like really feminine and really soft. And I just love, how these look. I feel very cool and up to date. I know when I show Coco these, she is going to die and she's gonna think I'm so cool. You know the tables have turned and like your whole life, your little sister has looked up to you for what's cool. And then suddenly it's the other way around. <laughs> oh my gosh, I was just about to change into another outfit and then I realized I had this top from Abercrombie and how cute it would look with the jeans. And this is the softest thing in the whole world. I absolutely love it. It's like a little fake wrap. And honestly guys, the whole thing is just giving me ballet core, like ballerina vibes, this little wrap over top, really soft white knit with like the ballet pumps um, and the pink jeans. I feel like we just need a little bun. Should we do a bun? Let's do a bun. I just had to quickly take you off the tripod and show you the look, because I think it's so lovely. I feel like I look cool. Like for me, I look really cool in these jeans, but it's still soft, it's feminine, it's ballet core, it's like everything we love while still looking really nice and up to date. I always feel like I need sunglasses on my head when I do a bun, just so I don't look like an egg. But the next thing I got is this really cute little pleated skirt, which you guys know is such a me thing to wear in autumn winter. It's in this really lovely taupe colour. The only thing is I ordered a medium because I was just worried about the length, but it is way too big for me so I'll have to just reorder that in a size small but if I just cinch that in you can kind of see what it should look like really really cute I love it with this top as well I feel like with the shoulder bag and the ballets it's just giving that same really casual cute feminine but still like up to date trendy vibe I have a couple more jumpers actually to show you this one is like an open collar kind of um chunky knit but I wondered if this would look cute kind of like over the shoulder but I just don't know if it's like too much white on white and it's like not quite the same shade of white. I'll pop this one actually on so you can see what it looks like on. 
I really love this as well. I think it looks so cute. It's just like slouchy, girly, off duty, but super, super cozy. I mean, God, if you guys could just feel this, you know, Abercrombie always comes through with the cozy soft knits. Um, but yeah, this is adorable. I really love like the open collar as well. I just think it looks so, it's like trendy, but also very classic looking. Giving you guys a mirror close up of the look. I love it. I really want to wear this in Toronto. I hope it will be warm enough. I think it should be. 22, 23 degrees. Yeah, I think it's so, so cute. Very trendy, but classic. Okay, I've got another cozy white jumper, which again, I've just paired with the score because I just feel like everything just goes really well with this. They all go really nicely with the jeans as well, but I'm just thinking like this look is so cute. It's just everything. It's got the chunky high neck. It is kind of a bit more trendy to have things more like a drop waist and more hip focused rather than waist, even though the waist will always be like my love and I'll always want to tuck, but it's also got the little split hem, which means it's really good for tucking. It just makes it a bit more flexible. So you can have it like tucked at the front, hanging down at the back, which is really cute. And yeah, I mean, it's just a total and utter wardrobe staple. I just wear these like literally every day in autumn winter and Abercrombie's they just like keep their quality as well and then the last thing I got um is this jumper which I knew you guys would pretty much go crazy for because I've had these I think for the last two autumns they're just like Abercrombie's really chic graphic sweaters um that always have like a different location so there'll be like a France a New York a London a Los Angeles or something like that and just these really gorgeous designs that do feel that very like old money aesthetic and they are so soft and comfortable like fleecy on the inside really chic crisp white beautiful font this one's in burgundy I think my last one was in brown and the one before that was dark green so really really chic classic like heritage colors you can just wear these like over a little skirt I love the design on this one as well it says can France luxury resort with the rose it's basically like a fake hotel which i think is so cute and i actually got this one in a medium my other ones are both small but i kind of like the idea of it being a little bit oversized a little bit slouchy it would look so cute with like a little shirt underneath with the collar poking out like really preppy so that's everything i got from abercrombie and i feel like it was a very successful little haul because i want to take everything to toronto with me um and as always everything will be linked down below let me know what your favorite bits were but now i seriously have to start packing up all of my stuff for my flossy shoot which is tomorrow oh my god I have been pushing this to the back of my brain I had my trip to France last week I was ill when I got back as you can hear I'm still a little bit stuffy um and I ordered a bunch of stuff um before I went away last week and most of the stuff I'm just going to take is stuff I already have because all of my shoes and bags like are perfect for flossy shoots but I need to get everything together pack the car me and my mum are staying out tonight um, which is what we usually do before flossy shoots because it just means that I can have more sleep and it's not like we're not stressed by traffic in the morning getting to a place on time so we usually try and stay nearby but god knows what this is going to be like tonight because we're going back to the original location where we shot the very first overture campaign um, and it's in Croydon and there is nowhere nice to stay so i've had to book this random hotel on the side of the road and i'm just a bit nervous about it i really need to get my stuff together i need to wash my hair as you can see so it's clean for tomorrow so i will check in with you shortly when i am a little bit more sorted okay so i've gathered i think most of the stuff that i want to pack um accessory wise for the shoot tomorrow um i can only really do this suitcase because um like for accessories because we're taking my car and as you guys know I've only got a little mini and the back seats do go down so there is room for like quite a lot of stuff but just not I can't go too over the top and I always end up taking way more than I need anyway so I'm not too stressed um and don't you just think everything looks so cute so this is the vibe um there's some shoes most of these are mine but I did buy a couple of pairs as well and we're going for like Mary Jane's ballet shoes I mean I'm loving these guys bags same kind of vibe like cute little handbags um these are from Charles and Keith I love this one absolutely love this bag um really good for shoots but also just such a cute bag like for every day and then this is all the jewelry that I'm taking I'm taking my Dior necklace this beautiful set of pearls that my granny just gave me two weeks ago um it's a gorgeous like draping trio and they're so beautiful they're really like quite warm toned 
pearls which will work really really well for the colour palette of the shoot. I've got my bridesmaid earrings that Josie got me from Nice Cream London. I absolutely love these. I've just packed some of my jewellery here. It's just a bunch of like pearl bracelets and necklaces. They're only cheap, but they look quite good for shoots. Like we've used them so many times before. And also these, which were not cheap. They're like vintage earrings. I can't remember the brand, but they're kind of giving like 80s Chanel. I actually got these for the, um, the LA shoot, like for Pretty Woman. I just think they're so, so cool. So over the top. And then yes, your eyes do not deceive you. These are Santini jewellery boxes. So if you don't follow Santini online, yes, they have launched jewellery and it's everything you would hope for and more. I'll show you. As you can see, the packaging is just stunning. So when you open the box, you get this gorgeous little pink velvet pouch for travel. These are my dream earrings. Look at those little gold bows with the pearl. Oh my gosh. I think actually maybe these are my dream earrings. Look how sparkly they are. Oh my gosh, such a beautiful, timeless feminine design. Like, I'm just obsessed. And then I think you guys are going to have a heart attack when you see these. Oh my gosh, they are just magical. So this is pretty much what I'm packing accessory wise. Um, then I'll also take, I think my Steamline hat box and my suitcase just as like a prop. But I think this time I'm actually really excited because I've actually got like a proper collection of flossy dresses now. Like all of these are flossy. Actually no, that little pink one right there is selkie. So I won't take that one, but there are a couple more also that I've washed that I just need to steam. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna actually take all of the pink and white flossy dresses, which is almost all of them, let's be honest, and use them as kind of like a prop, which is so cool because obviously we've never done that before. We have so many dresses now, like how exciting. I just still love the originals the most though, I think, like the Faye, the Coco, and the Nelly. Like, I still think these are my favourite dresses. And then, obviously, the Eloise as well is a particular favourite. Um, but, yeah, I really can't wait for you guys to see the new dresses. Oh, my gosh, I almost forgot headbands. What is actually wrong with me? I was staring at the case like something is definitely missing. Headbands, and I've got my vast collection, of course. I love this um, new one, by the way. This, like, tweed boucle one. Um, I got this from Sephora, of all places. How random. Um, and also the new pearl and other stories one. Oh my god, all of this girly goodness, it is just heaven. And then I'm also just gathering up some other bits and pieces like props from my flat. It's kind of just to like make the location my own and make it look like Freddy, make it look like flossy. So I've got like my flowers I'm gonna take. We can either use them as a bunch or we can take them out and handle them individually. I've got my bust with her pearls my hat box, I'm gonna take the other hat box, my pink phone, my swan, obviously, because the swan was in the first shoot, so Elizabeth has to come back. We've got the flossy box. If you've never seen a flossy box before, this is what it looks like. This is what you get when you order a dress. We've actually like been through a few colors of flossy box, like just to make sure we get the perfect pink because I kept on changing my mind, but I just love this shade of pink. Like I think it's perfect. I've got a couple of prints um, from my flat just to dot around. I don't think you've seen these before guys, have you? Um, my dad actually got me this one for either my birthday or Christmas last year. Um, just the breakfast at Tiffany's film poster, which I love. And then I got this. I think it's from the same shop. I think my dad got mine um, from Camden, like a shop in Camden. And I think it's the same shop, but they have one in Spitalfields as well. And I was at Spitalfields Market with JJ um, this summer. I can't remember when. Um, and I found this one, which I thought was so cool. It's a Vogue, like a vintage Vogue cover from 1907. How cool is that? I thought it just really um, went well in like my lounge as well, like it really goes with the vibe of my living room. So I thought we could just take these prints and maybe pop them somewhere in the background. I've got my cute shoe boxes. The thing is, I just can't take very much this time because I don't have a big car. I realize I've been depriving you of Cinderella here on YouTube. Look at this baby. She's just been watching the neighbor's cat from the window wistfully, haven't you? You want to go and fight? Is Daddy gonna look after you tonight? Daddy's at football, but then he comes home and looks after Cindy. Guys, this is the only thing that Cinderella cares about in this world. 
is this mouse. Um, I got it from Portobello Road from a pet shop, but then I realised you could get it on Amazon for half the price. So don't be like me. Oh, you're a good baby. Oh, you're such a good baby for your mummy. I love you. I miss you. I always miss you so much. Right, guys. Oh my gosh, I've got cat hair all over my lips. Um, I had my skirt going. How um, blank does the wall look without this one? It's a bit disturbing. But anyway, I'm going to get going. And I will hopefully try and catch up with you guys tomorrow on the shoot. Um, I don't know how much time I'm going to have to vlog, but I'm going to try my best to give you guys some behind the scenes. Um, and yeah, wish me luck. So guys, I thought I'd just do a quick little vlog whilst the vibes are still chilled. I'm midway through hair, as you can see. The vibes are so perfect. We were here last time for Overture, and I honestly had the worst day. I've talked about it previously in a video, but like, I basically had like a 12 hour panic attack. It was awful. I was so stressed. I was crying. I cried all the way home in the car. I just did not have a good day. So I'm so actually happy to be back here. Um, feeling so much calmer, more zen. We really have like the dream team now on flossy shoots. Um, so as you can see, it's just so quiet and chilled. The girls are upstairs, they've started shooting. I'm just getting mine finished. Um, the collection looks amazing. As you can see, I'm wearing one of the pieces now. Little sneak peek. Ooh, we can hear the music. Hard at work. Oh, there she is! Oh my gosh, wow. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. Oh my god, look at these shots of Naji. Wow. Oh my god, she looks incredible. <laughs> I do, yeah. <laughs> Completely changed my mind about it. You've said that several times on Flossy Shoes. Have I? Yeah. Cat's finally here on a Flossy Shoes! And look what I wore. Just You're pink for the occasion. Those, yeah. They are such cool trousers. Really You're doing like Flossy but cat style. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and these are previous dresses, just the archive, you know. So nice. Just the exhibition. So Future v &A exhibition, I always say. That's my favourite. Yeah, that's the best. The best seller. Mm. The iconic Coco. And the one you're wearing now. Yeah, do you? This, like, this is your yeah. favourite from this collection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so good. And just, oh, the set is looking gorgeous. Mm. This is adorable. Oh my God. I'm gonna fix that. Yeah. Well, if you all want, a, if you want you a band, you can hold hands. Yeah. yeah so you're not so. Yeah. 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 I think that's yeah. That's just the bit. hair up the hair on that side. It's just gone funny. If you go, yeah. Sorry, I'm confused. Think that's a bit better. So let's see that. Given the girls the fans, oh my god, that's horrible. The fans are needed. It's hot today. The shoot's going very well so far, isn't it, mommy? It's really She good, is yeah. the producer today slash yes. set dresser. And very important. To very me. important, as well as the interpreter. Sorry. Yes, Although she unfortunately wore her today. her jeans, which is to my to my disgust is getting lots of compliments on yeah. today. Freddie's really upset that everybody loves my jeans and not a stupid headband. Look how nice this headband is, guys. <laughs> it matches the outfit. The outfit is perfection. <laughs> we have got the first set of shots, which I'm thrilled about. Just about to start the second, and lunch has arrived, which is lovely. <gasps> Look at the dresses and everyone's having a good time. It's chill the vibes today. It's really quiet, small team. Um, everyone just gets what's going on, which is really nice. Um, and yeah, we're getting gorgeous, gorgeous pictures.
Yes, Elizabeth. There's always a mad rush at the end of the day to like put everything back exactly how you found it. Um, that's the thing with location houses, you're allowed to kind of do whatever you want, like moving furniture around and embellishing things, but you've just got to make sure that you leave it neat as a new pin and exactly how you found it. So everyone's like, where did this chair go? Where did this table go? But I think we have managed it. I'm not sure I can even show you the whole house because I've really got to go home now. But if you want to see, I'm sure my mum did a full tour. Good morning, guys. Oh my God, that euphoric post shoot feeling is with me today, it's with me strong, it's the best feeling. Honestly guys, I get a little, probably too like het up about these photo shoots and in fact, this one I kind of made the decision to be a little bit more chilled about it. Like, Freddie, do not make yourself ill, do not get yourself stressed to the point where you are just so anxious and fraught, um, it's just not worth it. Uh, but it was still perfect, even though I feel like I was a lot more relaxed this time, but I still got the feeling, just that feeling of relief when like everything went to plan. I did annoyingly have to wash my hair. I really wanted to keep the curls because it looked so good, but Christina had done a lot of like volume powder to give it like the full look which looked amazing but it just felt so disgusting and I just had to wash it out so I washed my hair last night when I got in with a hair mask as well so it's feeling really silky smooth but I am going to recurl it because I'm going out tonight so tomorrow is my birthday it's Virgo season 16th of September the most glamorous date in the calendar I've always had this thing and I don't know if everyone feels this way about their birthday date but I just think the 16th of September is such a classy elegant date date like the 16th of September it's just it's just lovely it's my favorite day of the year I just think my birthday really suits me I clearly chose a very good day to appear into the world um so birthday is tomorrow but we are going out tonight me and JJ and our friends we're gonna go I think just for drinks and dinner nothing like overly exciting but I'm really excited because I think we're gonna go to Din Tai Fung which is like you guys know because I've vlogged when we've gone in LA but it's like our favorite dim sum place and they have a restaurant in London and it's so cute because it's actually pink so we're gonna go there drinks before maybe drinks after who knows um but I will check in with you guys later when I am dressed because for now I just have a lot of work to do and I also will need to get ready. Okay I've got to be quick because JJ is rushing me out the door but this is my outfit for my birthday drinks. I'm in the Darcy dress. I decided to wear it with the ballet pumps and the pink Chloe Tess bag so you know how I feel about pink and brown. And um, I do a necklace, sunglasses. It's super sunny in London today so I think we're just going to go for some rooftop rosé in Covent Garden and then some dim sum. So excited! It's not your birthday. No, but it is. It's a pre-birthday day. Yes. 
just on my birthday. Yeah, right. We've just decided what? You don't even break, you don't even look away from the camera. You're smiling, <laughs> thinking that it's fine. <laughs> We've just decided um, instead of staying for another, which we could do. We could do. I do sort of want to do because I, I just love it here. You've got to come here. You've got to. The Ladre Terrace in Covent Garden. Perfection. But it's not. It's a little bit of a wall. I feel like J a bit of a wall. JJ feels a bit up against the wall. I'm. I do get that. Yeah. Um, but it is lovely. We're on the terrace. You can sit in the court. I think you'd probably prefer to be sat down in, in the courtyard. But I do like being high up. Which I'll show you when we go down. Um, I love it. Like the spoons over the road. It's got a balcony. JJ, we're not going to the spoons. <laughs> we're not doing it. It's my birthday. We'll go to the spoons on your birthday. Anyway, we've actually decided instead of staying for another rose blood, which is really good by the way, we're going to do a rosé crawl around Covent Garden. We're just gonna try a couple spots. It's my birthday. Next stop is Lily's Cafe. Well, we think they do rosé. It says Ultimate Provence. So. Surely. So we ordered the Ultimate Provence. Yeah. There was a cheaper glass, but JJ said, it's my birthday, so we can get the more expensive one. <laughs> Let's do the taste test. Cheers. What do you think? You first and then me. I'm getting... JJ's recently been on a wine tasting tour of San Sebastian. I don't mind it. I'd just like to say that is not the ultimate. <gasps> <laughs> Really good, yeah, 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 no, yeah, no, 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 it's one of Fun and JJ's favourite restaurants. It's Din Tai Fung. Um, we love it because we always go in LA and to be fair, the menu is better in LA than it is in London, just saying. But it's still great and it just so happens that it's in the pink building in Covent Garden. Total coincidence. Um, but yes, we will be coming here later with our friends. Um, but we've still got a couple more rosés in us <laughs> before. So, we're at the opera. Sadly, this may be the last stop on our rosé crawl, time-wise. We'll see about if that. If we're lucky, we might get another one in. Um, Can you tell that Freddie's had a drink, guys? We need a bit of redemption <laughs> after the last rosé because... It was so shit. <laughs> um, anyway, welcome to the Opera House. It is one of my favourite places, actually. Um, it's all the tourists. Yep, yep, got that. No, no, yep, yep. Can be in it. Hello. For everyone, yep. we're on widescreen. <laughs> um, one of my favourite places. I've been coming to the Opera House since I was a little little girl with my mum's the ballet. And JJ and I were recently here. Uh, we saw La Traviata at the Opera. I liked it. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> it was good. It was so fine. By the way, this is the terrace where we will be heading. Isn't it gorgeous? Absolutely amazing. And they are open um, even if there's no show. So tonight I don't think there's a show on at the Opera House, but the bar is open as usual. <laughs> Welcome to the gorgeous terrace of the Opera House. I beg your pardon? <laughs> The Opera House! You have to sing it. No, but this view isn't... Look, this isn't the view. This is the That's view. Stunning. Yeah, let's grab a table. Hi, my name is Freddie Cousin Brown, aka Freddie My Love, and this is my third glass of rosé, and I don't know why I'm feeling so tipsy after, like, literally. She hasn't eaten anything. I haven't eaten today. I, have, I just... Not on purpose, just the day. Don't you worry, chat. She's gonna get sloshed. <laughs>
birthday pancakes. Oh, look at that. Limon. Mmm. Perfect. Cindy, are you helping mummy open presents? Where's Bobo? Where's Bobo? Are you my good baby? Are you my goodest girl? Did you just attack Bobo? He's a little predator. <laughs> You're camouflage. I'm just camouflaging mummy. Because I'm pink. I'm pink, pink and white. white. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> don't talk, mummy, don't talk. <laughs> Look how small she is. <laughs> He's abnormally big. Good morning everyone, it's my birthday and it's definitely not the morning, it's the afternoon. I've had a lovely morning, we had a long lie-in after our rosé crawl last night which my camera died so I didn't get to film the whole rosé crawl but we had the nicest dinner at Din Tai Fung, like honestly it was so much fun. We all went for ice cream afterwards as well, are delicious which is like the place to go for ice cream if you're in Covent Garden, it's so good. And we've had a nice chilled out morning, JJ made me pancakes or crepes which is my favourite with lemon and sugar and then I've just opened my presents, I've got dressed and we are heading out in a little while um, for dinner. We are going to one of my favourite restaurants which is the Ivy Asia. It's just so good. I love the food and I just love the restaurant itself. Like it's so magical. Um, I will take my camera but like I don't want today to be a vloggy day because it's my birthday but I will capture little bits and bobs um, and also just want to show you guys some of my favourite gifts. It's just gone very dark, so I've come by the window. But guys, look at my present from JJ. Yes, it's the Pearl Dior bracelet that matches my necklace. And we actually bought this at the Dior boutique in Saint-Tropez, which makes it even more special. And oh my God, I just, oh, I just love it so much. My mum also got me these gorgeous gold rings because basically like I just really like simple jewellery, like gold, really ultra thin, dainty jewellery. Um, and the rings I wear, I get them from and other stories, but because like I don't want to take them off every time I wash my hands or like go for a shower or something like that. Um, and all of my rings just like end up tarnishing and I have to replace them. So I wanted some like really nice quality gold rings that would not tarnish that I could just wear every day so she got me a couple of these and I absolutely love them there's just a really plain gold band and then like a beaded gold band um so I know they're quite plain but like it's exactly what I wanted um and I absolutely love them she also got me a necklace which I also wanted but I'm not as keen on the necklace so I think I'm going to swap it for another one Coco got me this which I mean I'm not gonna lie did really make me cry when I opened it this morning in fact I'm gonna get choked up talking about it now but um it's my two babies um absolutely adorable and there's like a cute one of each of them on the inside and then a silly one on the other side so there's Nelly sticking her tongue out and then there's Cindy sticking her tongue out oh my gosh I'm just crying so I think I'll put this maybe here also card of the year has to also go to Coco um I just thought this was the most hysterical thing I'd ever seen and Coco just has this tradition of just being so blunt in her cards like she literally writes to Freddie happy birthday love Coco I mean and she has the writing of a five-year-old and I just hope it never changes I hope that she's 35 and she still writes dear Freddie Lots of love is actually really nice for her and a smiley face. Like, wow, she went to extra effort this year, but normally it's a lot blunter than this. And guys, I just thought you would love this so much. My mum and dad got me the Queen Elizabeth Memorial mug, which I just love so much. I think it's the most beautiful thing in the world. Like the whole range of products they had was gorgeous, but I just thought I would use the mug the most. Um, so it's got her crest, and all of the angels and cherubs and flowers and pink bows 1926 to 2022 and then at the back the lovely quote that um charles used in his speech may flights of angels sing thee to thy rest which i'm not gonna lie guys this made me emotional this morning as well it was shortly after i opened the little um kitten photos but also this is like gold on the top as well which i think is super pretty and then from my granny i got this lovely book the story of the pearl which sounds right up my alley very very cute and then also this absolutely beautiful little mug i think this is the most me like mug teacup 
I've ever seen. Like the pink and white stripes and the gold. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. I cannot wait to have a peppermint tea in this later on. And then finally, this absolutely adorable little Christmas decoration, which will go so perfectly with my tree's theme, pink, white, and gold. Um, this is like a pearly pink high heel with gold and glitter. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. This is the birthday outfit. The Cindy dress. I am going to take the jacket, but it's 26 degrees right now, so I don't think I actually need the jacket. Um, I've just popped on my Dior necklace, my new bracelet, which is gorgeous, sunglasses, um, and then I'm actually going with these little pumps, which I got for my flossy shoot for the pretty woman, but I just think it, it just goes. The vibe is cute, um, and my little coach under the shoulder, and this is the birthday fit. Good morning guys, this is the final day of the vlog. In fact, I'm kind of signing off. Um, the birthday was lovely, the meal was divine. We've got leftovers, which I'm thrilled about, and birthday cake later um, at my parents' house. But we are flying to Toronto the day after tomorrow, so I've got to get the case packed. Also, I have to decide what I'm wearing for the wedding, so I thought I'd show you my options quickly. Um, but we're only taking one case between us, so I'm having to like, I've been forced to pack lightly for this trip, which you know is very, very hard for me. So first things first, let me show you my dress options. So here are my top three choices currently. I think these are the best, because Vanessa wants pastels. Obviously, she's not being like a bridezilla, but she just said like pastels preferred if possible, which I love, obviously. So option one, Daphne dress. Guys, not to toot my own horn, but you just can't go wrong with this dress. It's stunning. My mum tried it on yesterday because she was considering wearing it and ultimately decided not to because it looked so good on her, but it's just not very her style. Like you guys have seen my mum. It's just not very her. But the dress just looked so exquisite. And I was like, I can't believe that's actually my own brand. Like it's so beautiful. Um, and now I've got it on. I'm like, maybe I should just wear this. It's so gorgeous. It's so like princessy and eye-catching without feeling like you're trying to, to outdo anyone. I still feel like it's very understated, but just the way that it fits and the details and the shiny fabric, it's just divine. Um, however, I did wear this. I've worn this a few times already this year. I wore it to Buckingham Palace. I also wore this to JJ's sister's wedding. So I just feel like I've done the Daphne dress this year. Like, I haven't worn the other two dresses at all. You just cannot go wrong with the Daphne dress. However, I'm kind of feeling like I might like to wear one of the other two just because I haven't worn them. So let's try them on. And if not, this is clearly perfect. <laughs> okay, it's super creased, so try and ignore. But look at this dress. This is the Selkie one and it's just magical. This is almost as perfect as the flossy dress. No, it really is, like the shape and everything. Look how flattering it is around the waist, the full skirt, it's truly beautiful. However, as I've got this on now, I'm thinking, yeah, like it, it looks a bit too white. And JJ just said to me, you can't wear that, that's white. And I'm like, it's not white, it's peachy pink. But like, if people don't really know, you know, they'll think it's white. And I don't wanna be that person that everyone looks at and is like, did you really wear that? So I think this is a no, sadly, even though it is sublime. Like, look how divine this dress is. I actually can't cope. I love it so much, but I shall have to save it for another occasion. And then the last option is the coast dress, which I do really love this dress. I feel like I don't love it as much as my Daphne dress, but I kind of want to wear something different. And I did kind of just have this feeling that I wanted to wear pink to Vanessa's wedding. Um, so I think I'll go with this. It's super pretty. Like the skirt is gorgeous. And I feel like with a little pearl bag, 
my pearl um like mule sandals and like my either my dior choker or my other pearl necklace and maybe even my no i think the headband's too much we won't do a headband as well but i feel like this will be a really nice look the only thing is it's a little bit big here and i've definitely left it too late to get anything tailored here in london but i might try and find somewhere when we get there because we have a few days in Toronto before the wedding but look at the back of the dress how cute is that it has like a really kind of a low square back and actually this dress is going to go really nicely with Vanessa's wedding dress it's kind of in the same style like it's not the same style but it's similar and I actually feel like this has a very nice um synergy to her wedding dress so I think guys I will go with this one so guys I'm going to love you and leave you I really hope you've enjoyed this vlog I think it was pretty long I just wanted to make sure that you guys had a nice good chunk of content to somewhat make up for my absence and I really hope you enjoyed it lots of love and thanks in advance as I am expecting there'll be some nice supportive comments um regarding my monologue at the start of the video so thank you so much for your support and I will hopefully see you all very soon